Well, hello. Welcome to the Artemis Defense Institute. My name is Stephen Lieberman. I'm one of the co-owners of the Artemis Defense Institute. And this video series is really designed for new gun owners, uh, but there are a lot of existing gun owners that can probably get some valuable information out of this as well. Now, we tend to be somewhat California-centric because I am an attorney licensed to practice in California, but I know that these videos are seen throughout the entire nation, and those of you who live outside of California can probably gain some insight as to what we're having to deal with here behind enemy lines in California. This video is what makes an assault weapon an assault weapon, at least under the concept of California law. Now, first off, when we use the term assault weapon, that is a politically charged term, okay? An assault weapon is defined by the California legislature. There is absolutely no rational basis for their designation as an assault weapon, since theoretically speaking, any weapon could be used as an assault weapon. That notwithstanding, there are certain statutory guidelines that make one weapon illegal, and another weapon legal, okay? The weapon system that most people are familiar with that they potentially can run afoul of California regulations is the AR-15. And as I'm sure most of you have in your office, I have my AR-15 right here. Now, under California law, we had an opportunity to register our firearms as actually designated assault weapons. That was a brief period of time where individuals, if they wanted to, could actually name their weapon an assault weapon under the California legislative uh, concept. There, I was not a huge fan of this. That being said, since I did have a number of clients that wanted to register their weapons as assault weapons, I felt it was only, you know, legitimate on my end to register mine to make sure that the process actually, you know, I knew how to navigate it. So this particular AR-15 is in fact a registered assault weapon. Now, what makes a, 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 an AR-15 an assault weapon and how do we study a weapon and decide whether or not it runs afoul of California law? So the first question we always have to ask, is it a semi-automatic center fire rifle. Now, in this particular context, the thing here that is an actual firearm is this area right here. This is the actual lower receiver, and that is what is a registered firearm. The upper, the stock and the buffer tube, the upper receiver here, these are not registered firearms, at least not at this point in our legislative history, but the only part that actually is a firearm is this area right here, okay? So we ask ourselves, is this a semi-automatic center fire firearm? And the answer to that question as far as this weapon is concerned is yes, okay? It fires a 5.56 round. It is a semi-automatic. It definitely falls within the scope of being a semi-automatic center fire weapon. The next question that we ask is whether or not it has a detachable magazine. Now, in this context, a detachable magazine, you can see we've got this little button right here. That is what used to be referred to as a bullet button, okay? Required an actual tool in order to press it in to remove the magazine. This is called a radlock, which is a little bit of a different system, but um, effectively speaking, if I press this magazine release, the magazine's going to come out. If it is fixed in place, and we'll talk about what is necessary to have it fixed in place, then the analysis ends. It, by definition, cannot be an assault rifle. Now, in this context, the magazine can be re uh, removed by simply pressing the magazine release, so this is a detachable magazine. Once we determine that it is a detachable magazine, we then look to see whether or not it has any evil features. If it has one or more evil features, then it is statutorily defined as an assault rifle. So evil feature number one, does it have a telescoping stock? Well, yeah, it does. So that alone would make this an assault weapon. Okay, does it have a pistol grip? Well, it does. So once again, this alone would make it an assault rifle. 
Does it have a vertical grip at the forehand? This is questionable. Now, this is actually intended to be a point of indexing, okay? But some DA could theoretically construe this little nub as being a vertical stabilizer. Does it have a flash suppressor, okay? If it's a flash suppressor, that's going to be construed as one of the evil features. It would have to have just a simple muzzle brake. If it has any one of those, then by definition, it is, an, it is an assault rifle. Now, like I said, this is registered as an assault rifle, so it's immaterial. But how would we modify this gun to take it out of the assault weapon category? Well, first thing we would have to do is we would have to make sure that the stock is not collapsible, right? We would have to basically pin and weld this thing in place. We would have to remove the muzzle brake, all right? Prevent that, or excuse me, the uh, flash suppressor, put it on a muzzle brake. Probably have to get rid of this thing if we wanted to be overly cautious. And we would have to get rid of the pistol grip. Now, there's a number of ways that we could do that. One is by buying a rig system that effectively uh, eliminates all of these evil features. That's a Thorsten stock. That's how that system is designed. Alternatively, we could put some, we could, you know, obviously fix this in place and put some sort of device on the back end of this uh, pistol grip that prevents me from wrapping my thumb all the way around. Essentially like a little shark fin that forces me to keep my thumb on the support side. This, I guess, makes us safer somehow. Um, the other way of making this firearm California compliant would be to make it a fixed magazine. Now, the way that we define a fixed magazine, the legislature, actually more specifically the Department of Justice, says that the firearms action needs to be broken and rendered inoperable before the magazine could be released. So if this had a true fixed magazine system, I would have to pull out the rear takedown pin, okay, actually remove that, crack the action, the action is now, you know, broken and inoperable. Then I could hit the magazine release to drop the magazine. Once I've done that, I would put in my new magazine, close it up, lock the rear takedown pin in place, and now I could get back to my recreational fun, okay? Um, that's pretty much the concept that the Department of Justice has come up with. Now, there is another way that is really starting to take on favor. And I'm quite candidly somewhat impressed by them. The idea that it is, remember I told you when we analyze these things, we say, is it a semi-automatic center fire weapon system? Well, this device right here, okay, that is the bolt carrier group. This is what effectively makes this thing a center fire rifle, right? I don't have to use this. The barrel of this firearm roughly equates to that of a 22 long rifle pistol round. I can actually have this device removed, replace it with a 22 rimfire bolt, okay, close the action, and now this thing is only going to shoot 22 rimfire. Remember we said, is it a semi-automatic center fire rifle? Well, if I've replaced the bolt carrier group with a 22 rimfire, this isn't a center fire rifle anymore. Now it becomes a rimfire, and our analysis comes to an end. AR-15s, AK-47s, anything that falls into the black scary rifle category is extraordinarily complex, okay? And citizens of the state of California do definitely run the risk of being non-compliant. It happens quite frequently, and the penalties are actually at the felony level. So if you have any questions at all, or you are concerned about the status of your existing rifle, always feel free to email me at stephen at artemishq.com, or if you feel you need legal representation, stephen at ltccwlaw.com. As always, I want you to train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe.